Hello and uh, welcome to another podcast. So I've been meaning to show you my infrared camera for some time now because I think it's quite interesting. So I'll give you a bit of a close up look in a minute, but this is this is the camera. It uh, will be instantly recognizable to some of you as a Nikon D800. So it's quite old, but um, still very good camera. Still pretty high specs. Has a 36 megapixel sensor in it, I think. But what's interesting about it is that it's been converted to infrared. So it records um, quite a large proportion of the infrared spectrum. I think it's upwards of 720 nanometers, although I can't quite remember, to be honest with you. I might have to, I'll look that up and put it on the screen. Uh, so you get some color, but also sort of uh, extended monochrome images. Um, so I'll show you a little bit. Uh, of those there is you can I mean this one I converted I think it was 720 nanometers but they same company also do one where you can convert it to I think it's 840 and uh, that will record much less color and more black and white but I sort of quite like infrared color pictures I used to use high speed uh, the Kodak infrared film back in the day with filters to get some interesting effects. I kind of wanted to keep some color in the in the images, although it is quite different from the Kodak film. Still quite interesting though. And I also used to use uh, the Kodak high-speed black and white infrared film. In fact, I've still got a couple of boxes of that, which I'll probably use now. Spring is starting at some point in maybe in my old uh, FM2. Um, so that'll be quite good, but yeah, you can, uh, so I'll, I'll put on the screen a quick video. You can see a close up of the camera and it obviously looks completely the same as a normal D800 and, uh, you wouldn't expect anything different really, but inside the sensor has been adapted to record infrared and the lens that I've got on it, which is the lens I tend to use, use it with most of the time at least, is uh, the Nikon 24-120 to f4, which is a nice uh, lens to kind of, nice general purpose lens to use for, for kind of photography, the landscape photography predominantly. Um, there are some problems with some lenses, they get this weird kind of um, weird effect in the middle of the image because of them being used with infrared. Um, but that's and uh, doesn't affect all lenses and doesn't affect this one so it works fine the other thing that this has actually been modified to do is the autofocus has been adjusted for infrared lights so that's another thing that they've uh, they did when they adjusted the uh, the, the sensor they adjusted to auto autofocus and actually at the same time I got the grip replaced because the grips on the front had uh, started to peel away as sometimes they do so I, I actually managed to get get those replaced I really like this camera um, I did use it for a while before I had it converted and I was of two minds not to not to convert it actually but um, my plan is at some point to get a d850 or some Z camera series camera to, to sort of replace my um, 750. Uh, but that's something for the future. Okay, so to actually look at some of the pictures, this is um, the output of the of the camera. Actually, this is slightly modified. So that's the output as it came straight out of the camera. And then you can see I've edited it a little bit. It's kept this one. I've kept the color, and I uh, quite like the the sort of weird cyan and this sort of tobacco slash sepia kind of colouring that you get with it. It produces a really interesting effect. And in black and white, you can get something quite similar. Um, I've just been playing with this one. I haven't quite edited it quite how I like it. I think it needs a little bit more uh, exposure maybe. Um, but I've got a couple of other images that I'd I like to show so I've taken a bunch here so again that's the image straight out of the camera of um, some foliage and that's obviously by a river and then I sort of did a little bit of editing 
And this is a bit more indicative of what you can get in terms of the black and white out of this camera. And you get that really nice sort of bright uh, white effect on the foliage because they obviously reflect more infrared. So that's, a, that's the kind of effect that I was quite keen on getting and replicating um, in digital with the uh, with the camera that is similar to what I would have seen with the sort of high-speed infrared stuff um, from the Kodak film. You probably could do something like this just by editing, but um, I don't know if I'd ever really managed to get it the same, but also... It's just good fun, isn't it, to kind of mess about with this stuff. So there's another one that's straight out of the camera. And then that's it edited a little bit into black and white. And you got the similar kind of effect of the, the foliage there. On these pictures, I didn't really get very interesting skies because there wasn't, just the day was, was not right for that kind of photography. But I will test it to see if you get that kind of dark skies that you get with the infrared film. I don't really see this as replacing uh, infrared film in my photography completely, but infrared film is getting increasingly hard to get and increasingly expensive. This one I quite liked uh, just as it was. So I just did a sort of, I straightened it because it was a bit wonky, and I did a sort of a bit of a basic edit. And I quite like this sort of slightly ethereal look to it that you get. Um, particularly that willow tree, which I took some pictures of, um, which I haven't edited yet. Um, I think yeah, that that's one there. So you get this like nice, nice effect on that tree, which uh, I think is really interesting. So these were taken a while ago, um, but we're getting to about the same time of year that these were taken. So it would have been last spring. Um, although I might say somewhere actually. May by the looks of it. Um, no, no, these were August. These so actually quite late in the summer. Um, this is also one I quite like as well. This one hasn't been edited that straight out of the camera. So the best time for infrared photography actually is in the spring because that's when the the new foliage reflects the light the most. So you get some quite interesting effects. So yeah, I posted ages ago me unboxing this camera and uh, showing like how the grip was a bit knackered and talking about what I was planning to do with it, but that's as far as I've got. So it's taken me quite a long time to A, get it converted and then really use it. And then what with the pandemic and lockdown and things like that, I haven't really been out with it as much as I'd like, but I'm planning to take it to the Yorkshire Dales because I think they get some really fantastic effects in the dales with the kind of field barns and the in the fields and so on so that's a quick little introduction to my infrared camera and i uh, hope you enjoy it and i'll see you in the next podcast